the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. It was from her blood that God took blood, blood that would become the fountain for our immortal life. It was of her flesh that God took flesh, the flesh that is now offered to us as the food of immortality. Thus says Bishop Basil of our Archdiocese in one of the most beautiful articles, written pieces ever written about the Theotokos, Mary, the All-Holy, the Virgin, the Mother of God, whose dormition we celebrate on this great day. On this feast, I want to speak about our Mother with unworthy lips of mine. However, I want to speak about her less dogmatically, that is, what we believe about her, and more about how her presence in the Church as a source of protection, comfort, and hope, and the fountain of spiritual experiences to all Christians. We can always remember why we call her the Theotokos. Because she gave birth to Christ, who is both God and man, and we cannot separate these two natures in him. We can always speak about her being the all-holy, al-fa'iqatul qadasa, because she became the temple and heaven that contained God, something no other temple was ever able to do. We can always remember why we believe that she was a virgin before, during, and after giving birth to Christ. Not because marriage or birth giving are not blessed, but to highlight that when you reach the fullness of a human purpose, nothing else satisfies your human needs. We can always speak about why we believe that praying for her works. Salah li waliyat ilah tanfa. Explaining how those who are departed of this life still hear our prayers and requests, and those whom among them are holy will pray for us in return. And we know that the Bible says that the prayer of the righteous availeth much. We can always explain her stature in the church as an epitome of faith, obedience, and humility, and an example to follow. We can also, and we should, speak about this feast of her dormition, also known as the summer, summer Pascha, al fusha al-Sayfi, in which we see the resurrection of Christ once again confirmed when her son tells her beforehand about the date of her death and when after her repose witnesses the apostles see Christ coming with the holy angels and carrying up her reposed body up to heaven something not all bodies will experience right after their death but Christ allowed that for her to both confirm that whom this body carried was truly God and thus is sanctified like no other human body or material has ever been sanctified and to also give us a living example to realize that believing in His resurrection, human death becomes but a translation into heaven, a gate to paradise. Thus we celebrate this feast with reverence and awe, mirroring Pascha, Eid al Eid, Bishab Eid al Fusah, Bishakil min al Ashkel, remembering to live our lives in a manner that makes our own death our own Pascha, passing over from death to life and from earth to heaven. 
And yet, and yet all this remains mere words and theory. If we do not experience her presence in the church, in our lives, if we don't remember her as a human being and contemplate on her unique experience with Jesus Christ, the human that was she the closest physically and emotionally to God. All that remains theory if we don't remember how much Christ loved her at the Yasur Habba, the relationship he had with her, and how he gave her to the church, as a mother, through the disciple John, the beloved through whom she became a mother to all who call themselves disciples of Christ, past, present, and future. Bishop Basil, in the article I mentioned, puts it most tenderly in his words, saying, Who but Mary breastfed him who feeds all creation? Who but Mary carried in her arms as mother, him who sustains and upholds all the universe. It was Mary who upheld God. Maryam Himlet Al-Ilah, the creator of all things, visible and invisible. As he took his first little steps on the earth, she offered him her little finger for a tiny hand to grasp on. When the child Jesus, as he must have done, Sayyidina Basil says, scraped his knee or was hurt by some unkind words by a playmate and wept and came running to mother. It was Mary who kissed the wound and made it feel better or took him in her arms and assured him that the unkind words and the sadness he felt would pass, that everything will be all right. Sometimes we forget that Christ is fully human, so he had these feelings. She brought comfort to God. And when God wept, when God cried, when Jesus wept, it was his mother like every mother who wiped away his tears. Mary wiped away the tears from the face of God. And Sayyidina Basil continues. What is profound about this is not just the fact that these things actually happen, but that Mary knew who it was that she supported with her little finger. She knew who it was who suckled at her breast, who it was that she changed his diapers. She knew who it was whose wounds she kissed and bandaged, whose hurt feelings she comforted, and whose tears she wiped away. Mary knew. So imagine this relationship. This is the mother that Christ gave us. The one human like us that was closest to God. Not a mere vessel that was used to fulfill a mission. Her presence as a tender mother who has boldness with her son to intercede and ask for her children is something the church experienced for 2,000 years. Countries have prayed for the mother of God and she aided them. Bishops and synods asked, sought her advice, and they found it. Mothers spoke to her about their children with tears, and they found refuge in her. Scared soldiers asked for her protection and found it. Families were saved from disaster with her aid and people in distress and sadness always find comfort when they come to her. 
I cannot but believe that the Mother of God works wonders, some known and many most unknown wonders in the world every single day as the mother of him who is the savior of the world. I know that personally, I never came to her and she turned me away, never. She always gave me what I needed, not always what I wanted, but always what I needed. In my family, in my ministry, and in my spiritual life. I will end as Bishop Basil ends that inspired article. Mary is our boast, our cause of rejoicing, our sister, our mother, and most of all, our intercessor. Let us honor her, love her, and bring our needs before her with the innocent confidence of children who know that their mother will meet their needs with love. In Ada Alaikum, blessed feast to all.